Thank you very much, Dr. Awad. Our hearts go out to you uh, and uh, all uh, our admiration for really your heroism uh, in your service to the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine uh, generally, and how heartbreaking to hear of the losses of your colleagues, uh, which add to uh, the heartbreak of a genocide taking place in in real time before our eyes, uh, where uh, we have the absolute disgrace and shame that uh, major governments, starting with my own the United States, which is absolutely complicit in genocide, uh, is a partner in this genocide, cannot uh, see, cannot uh, express truth, even uh, when the worst crime imaginable is is happening. So this has uh, been a period that is absolutely shocking and devastating for all of us. Let me start by saying that we at the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which is a, a global network of universities around the world, not only stand with you and with the people of Palestine, but whatever we can do uh, in whatever limited way we can help, we are really at your disposal. Uh, I have a couple of ideas uh, uh, that I'll uh, discuss at, at the end, um, but uh, we have a network of uh, scholars, a network of uh, data specialists that Mariam uh, helps to bring together from around the world. We uh, can also amplify your uh, data and your releases on SDG Today, which is committed to real-time uh, data. And the real-time that you are talking about is the life and especially the death of the people of Palestine right now. And we, in, in whatever small way, uh, our work to help you get this information out to the world community where we will be absolutely committed to do so. Uh, I can only say a, a few uh, brief remarks uh, to add to what you've uh, already said. First, this is a genocide. Uh, Israel is absolutely in violation of the 1945 Genocide Convention. <clears throat> Your data, uh, we should uh, help to ensure, uh, is in front of the justices of the International Court of Justice uh, and is uh, used by uh, the brave uh, government of South Africa in its uh, initiative to bring Israel to justice in the ICJ. Uh, you are documenting a genocide in real time. We need the court to make its ruling. We need the court perhaps to make another interim ruling. I am not a lawyer with experience at the ICJ, but the ICJ spoke initially about the real uh, possibility that a genocide was underway. Then it gave another interim ruling that uh, Israel was uh, uh, destroying lives and that it had to stop uh, its uh, operations uh, in Rafah. But I think uh, as the days pass and even as we speak, there are new Israeli operations in northern Gaza and the news reports talk of uh, bodies left on the streets because they can't even be cleared fast enough uh, with the, the uh, rain of bombs that Israel is, uh, is uh, unleashing right now. So I believe that the ICJ will rule that this is a genocide, but it should do so as fast as possible and based on the information that the PCBS is providing. Uh, I do hope <clears throat> that other governments uh, add the United States to uh, the case because the U.S. is without question making this genocide possible. Uh, 
and I say that in an absolutely literal way, not in its continued uh, political support for Israel, but in providing the munitions uh, and the financing and the intelligence and the direct military support every single day to the IDF to carry out this genocide. So the United States government is guilty of genocide as well. And this is as clear as can be and as shocking as can be. Uh, we have an administration that uh, is um, seemingly beyond reach uh, in its uh, indecency uh, and its unaccountability. Uh, I have been arguing for months that uh, the UN should immediately uh, welcome Palestine as the 194th UN member state uh, on the 1967 borders with capital in East Jerusalem and with control of these Islamic holy sites. Of course, uh, this exactly that resolution was taken up by the UN Security Council uh, in March and the United States vetoed it alone. Uh, in what otherwise uh, would have been uh, a uh, decisive vote by the UN Security Council. This is more shame on the United States. It is the single last protector of a genocidal state of Israel. And it's a disgrace that it continues in this way. So I urge that that vote be taken again and again and again, and if the United States stands alone and naked as a defender of genocide, well, the world will know. And I believe eventually the American people who are aghast and are absolutely calling for an immediate end of this war and an immediate end of America's complicity in this genocide will rise up against this government this Biden Blinken administration, uh, which has done so profound damage uh, to uh, the people of Palestine and to the world. So I would urge uh, the UN Security Council to make this vote again, and make it again and make it again. I think it's time for uh, governments in the Arab region that have previously established diplomatic relations with Israel to end them, because I do not understand how diplomatic relations can continue when a process of genocide is underway. Uh, and so there are several governments uh, that have diplomatic relations with Israel, not warm relations, of course, but formal diplomatic relations. I think that should be ended, uh, at least suspended uh, until this uh, genocidal action ends. I wonder if there are practical things that we can do, Dr. Awad. Uh, one thing that if it's of any use, uh, we are a, a global network of universities, many with online degree programs. Uh, Israel has systematically destroyed every university in Gaza. There are students that are looking for an education. Uh, and uh, if somehow they can have access to uh, digital, uh, uh, to, to uh, if they can have online access, I should say, uh, and have the means to be safe and to study uh, online, I'm sure that we could help facilitate their uh, entrance into some of the universities in our network that provide online degrees. These are generally master's degrees, but if there's some way that uh, we can provide any kind of service in that regard, I would uh, certainly like to know and like to pursue that. When it comes to health care, uh, which has also uh, essentially been destroyed first by pushing the people of Gaza to starvation, uh, and second, by bombing the hospitals and systematically destroying the hospitals and bombing the ambulances and doing everything possible to disrupt uh, any kind of uh, health care relief. If there are any ways that digital access uh, to, you know, the online health services uh, in any way can systematically be useful, 
we have a lot of experience with that and maybe some connections. I know that this is not extremely helpful, but uh, and there are a lot of people involved that know these things, but just to say that our our network uh, would be uh, absolutely uh, available to help support any kind of solutions in that matter as well. Finally, uh, if there is any way that uh, an international network of demographers, uh, of course, who know and respect you deeply and you know them, but if there's any way that we can help bring together uh, a network of demographers to support you or to validate work or to work, uh, as you say, uh, when the war stops to uh, do the detailed assessment for history and for justice and for uh, compensation and uh, other uh, matters that will be relevant, please also count on us for that. So I know this doesn't uh, end a war, it doesn't end a genocide, uh, it's, it's our expression of solidarity with you and with the people of Palestine and uh, our readiness to do whatever we can uh, to contribute to solutions. Uh, and I will continue uh, to do whatever I can to help accelerate the political solutions. We need a state of Palestine, we need it now, it could come now, if the United States would stop its blockade of decency and end its complicity in this genocide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sachs, for your insightful remarks uh, and for setting the tone uh, for the discussion in today's session. Um, before we jump into the discussion, I wanted to take the opportunity to show the story map that we have prepared. Um, hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, and this is an interactive uh, platform in which we feature the data that uh, PCBS and various UN agencies and researchers have been publishing. Um, so we'll share the link in the chat so that you can uh, explore the data and some of the content uh, of this living document that we planned to continuously update uh, with the latest data um, uh, in, in the near future. Uh, so just a quick overview of um, the story map so you can interact uh, with uh, the data. Uh, there is statistics that PCBS has shared from before the war, so 2022, 2023, so that you can compare some of these statistics uh, with um, the recent um, publications since October 7th. So that is something that you can access through the story map. And um, you can also uh, explore some of the interactive dashboards that, again, share the data sets that PCBS, um, HDX, uh, and other platforms have been uh, publishing. Um, we've also included some information in terms of how this data is being used for decision making currently and uh, in the long term in terms of um, uh, the uh, economic reconstruction and, and sustainable development plans uh, in the future uh, post-war. Uh, there are also, it also highlights some of the challenges uh, and also opportunities for partnerships to enhance uh, data collection and publication. Uh, and there are um, items uh, related to a call to action so that the data and statistical community and beyond it can take uh, upon themselves to, to contribute to, uh, to this work. So um, we'll share the link in the chat and I encourage you to uh, explore the information and the data that is featured in this uh, story map. Mariam, could I say one more yes. word? Yes, please. Uh, I, I, I'm in China. I have to uh, get off, uh, actually, uh, um, so I apologize. But uh, also, I apologize to you, Mariam, because uh, I've been traveling for weeks, so I haven't even had a chance to see the wonderful work you're doing. Uh, and I just want to uh, say a thanks to you, because uh, I'm seeing the story map for the first time. And uh, Dr. Awad, this is uh, the kind of uh, thing that uh, we would like to to do in any way to help you to uh, make the vital information that you're providing known uh, throughout the world. 
So thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Dr. Awad. Thanks, uh, Mariam. Thanks to everybody uh, on the line. And uh, apologies that uh, I'll now uh, uh, have to exit myself uh, for events here in China. So thank you very much. I think it's a very important uh, agreement. Uh, Wang Yi, uh, the foreign minister of China, called it a historic agreement. I, I believe that that is the case. Uh, not only uh, does it bring together the Palestinian factions, but it uh, brings China uh, right into uh, Middle East diplomacy and uh, again in a very important and a very positive way, I want to add. China has uh, pulled two rabbits out of the hat uh, in the Middle East. Uh, one was the reconciliation of Saudi Arabia and Iran, something the United States could never have imagined or done. Uh, and now the reconciliation of Fatah uh, and Hamas uh, in forming a unity uh, front. Uh, and this also, I think, is extremely positive and important. Is it going to work? What's happening is uh, basically uh, Israel is, is uh, so extreme uh, that it is uh, almost entirely isolated itself in the world community. It has one backer left. That's it. That's the United States of America. Uh, and now the U.S. is being cornered because uh, China is showing, look, there's, there's a way to do diplomacy. There's a way to answer questions. There's a way to actually move forward. So the U.S. stands completely isolated alongside Israel. Israel, uh, the Knesset, uh, that is the parliament, just recently voted that there will be no Palestinian state. But the world community overwhelmingly says, yes, there will. The Arab countries overwhelmingly say, yes, the two-state solution, which has been backed repeatedly by the U.N. Security Council and the U.N. General Assembly. And the Arab nations have stuck together very, very clearly, uh, saying the two-state solution is the only approach. It recognizes Israel's right to security, but it calls for a state of Palestine as the 194th U.N. member state with the capital in East Jerusalem. And so I think that while the pain of the actual war in Gaza continues and the risk <laughs> of escalation absolutely continues and what has happened today with China does not by itself stop that. It does make clear the direction of travel for the diplomatic outcome that will eventually emerge and that is a state of Palestine, UN member state, capital in East Jerusalem, whether Israel likes it or not. The direction of travel may be emerging, but the road is uh, still bumpy ahead, isn't it? I mean, Israel has strongly opposed this deal, particularly any involvement of uh, Hamas in Gaza's government. I mean, realistically, that's significant, isn't it? I mean, how do you see that affecting the future of the agreement? Israel does not and probably never will in the foreseeable future accept a Palestinian state. But that's not the end of the story. Israel should not and in effect, will not have a veto over a Palestinian state. What uh, is the real veto right now is not Israel. The real veto is the United States because the U.S. arms Israel. It provides the funding. It provides the logistics. Uh, without the U.S. backing, Israel cannot uh, carry on with its policy a single day. It can't carry on the war a single day. Inside the U.S., the situation is also quite interesting. The American people are absolutely against U.S. government foreign policy right now. Uh, they see that Israel is slaughtering civilians uh, in Gaza. They don't want the American uh, government to be a party to that, yet it is. So the U.S. Is, uh, US government uh, is uh, being isolated step by step, not only... Uh, from the world community, but also from the American people themselves. And the situation uh, is uh, getting even more difficult for the U.S. government. Uh, the International Court of Justice has uh, recently ruled that Israel's occupation uh, of the Palestinian territories violates international law. The International Court of Justice is likely to rule, in my view, my guess, uh, that uh, Israel is in violation of the 
1948 Genocide Convention. Uh, so the U.S., yes, is the effective veto right now, not Israel, but the U.S. And the U.S. is under tremendous diplomatic and even voter strain right now in keeping this uh, absolute uh, position to side with Israeli extremism. Briefly, we've been here before, kind of, haven't we, with uh, reconciliation efforts between uh, Hamas and uh, Fatah, which uh, have failed in the past. I mean, what are the main challenges that perhaps could hinder the uh, successful implementation of uh, this agreement? Well, of course, there can be uh, divisions uh, between the two parties that have uh, signed uh, this accord right now. Uh, but the, the real uh, challenge, again, is the practical one of turning this into something that actually leads to the state of Palestine as a U.N. member state uh, living in security next door to Israel. And that is a largely a diplomatic and political problem of the United States. Now, the fact that China is, uh, uh, again, uh, pulling this uh, amazing rabbit out of the hat, uh, showing that it is increasingly able to broker peace, uh, to find solutions to problems that America calls uh, impossible or irreconcilable, uh, puts added pressure on the United States to come up with something. It's been pretty pathetic. I think we're in the end game, of course, of uh, the, uh, the Biden administration. So I don't think that they're going to do anything different. We're going to have to wait to see uh, what happens uh, next, I think, till next uh, January uh, for any kind of diplomatic breakthrough. But what strikes me is that the whole world is siding for the two state solution right now, whether it's in the Security Council other than the U.S. veto or the U.N. General Assembly, other than a few votes that the U.S. was able to pull together. And now China's role will make that even more likely uh, to, uh, to come about and put added pressure on the United States to stop being such a complete, ineffective uh, prolonger of war and finally, get with the rest of the international community on the side of solutions and peace.